boy. Sit. Oh, good boy. Free. Oh, good job, Ben. Good boy. He's actually not walking that bad. We're back with Ben again. Ooh. Oh, don't tell me you're gonna. Oh, he's thinking of pooping. Oh, poop. It's all right, we've come prepared. Oh my god. We'll walk to the bin and then continue. In the last video, I was using a long line, which is something that typically is used if you want to teach your dog recall. It allows your dog to move away from you and you still have control bringing them back. But this time I'm using Ben's lead that my grandparents have been using for him. And how this one works is one part attaches to his halter, which is on his face. And then the other part attaches to his collar. Got a person on a bike here. Good boy, Ben. Good boy. Just checking the person out. If he pulls or anything like that, uh, you've got better control of the head with the halter. If the halter comes off, you've got an attachment to the collar. So it's mostly just as a backup with it being attached to the collar. He's also still getting used to his halter, so he does try to push it off of his head. I found out that Ben is turning two in November. So he's actually a lot older than I thought he was, but still young. Smelling new doggy smells. Good boy. I think the key is if they're doing anything good, you loosen up. If not, tighten. If they pull, tighten. If they slow back down, if they're walking well, then you loosen up the lead. And it's sort of, that, that pressure is an indicator for them on how well they're doing. I am thinking of letting him run around in the field today, but I didn't bring a ball. I forgot that. So, what was pretty cool to hear was that my grandpa I don't normally call him Grandpa, I normally call him Pop, but he took Ben for a walk yesterday apparently and uh, he said it went really well, which was good. So it's nice to hear that my Grandpa is taking his dog out, feeling a bit more able to. That's what we want to hear. <laughs> Got a little doggy on the other side of the fence here and I kind of want to see what he's like. I know he's going to act up a bit, but I also want to just see what he's like greeting it on the other side of the fence. Okay. Hey, puppy. Where is your owner? Hey, puppy. It's okay. It's okay. Good boy, Ben. Good boy. Did you want to be friends with that doggy? No pulling. So he did jump around a little bit. His tail was wagging. There was no growling. He'll just stay still. I'm not going to react. Hey boy. Hey boy. I think the dog's more barking at me. <laughs> yeah, when that little dog is barking, it's looking at me, which is kind of interesting. But no, he was, he actually behaved pretty well there. I see this guy is uh, looking like he's gonna leave the park now. Good boy, good boy gonna keep walking keep walking good boy yep, he sees the little dog going away Let's let him off for a bit let him run around I think that's what he needs we'll just go for a walk around the oval 
I have taken his head halter off and normally when we put this on there's like two of us holding him down so whether or not that was a good idea I don't know we'll just uh, play it by ear if only I brought the ball for him he'd probably be a little happier come on Ben come on I know some people well there's a few people that will recommend having their head or their eyes in line with your leg and then I've seen other people that will teach their dogs to walk slightly behind never in front and for me I think what is important is even if your dog is walking a little bit ahead as long as they're walking nicely good boy that's what matters most and then you can work on setting that boundary of them walking by your side if you really need to I think the reasoning what are you doing Ben? hey what are you doing? What are you doing, boy? What are you doing, boy? <laughs> I think the reasoning why people recommend the dog walking by the side or behind is because when they're out in front, the dog is in charge. But yeah, my my theory is as long as your dog, come on, as long as your dog is uh, walking nicely, that's what matters. Good boy, good boy, Ben. I'm just letting him know I'm happy if he comes back to me. Good boy. Good boy. Yes. Sometimes you'll look back and check in on me. So when I was doing some dog training with Ishka, one of the lessons that they taught us was to give your dog a bit of a warning tone before you want them to do something. Or if you give them the warning tone, they know to slow down or prepare for something. It's a good way to let your dog know, hey, I'm in control of this situation. You don't have to stress, you don't have to worry. For example, when you're coming up to the curb and you want your dog to slow down to get them to then sit. Um, in this case, they would say, good boy or good girl with a bit of a tone there to let them know that something's about to happen um, and normally if your dog responds well to this they'll look back at you they might slow down either way it's just to get their attention and so they know that something's about to happen um, and then you ask them to sit hopefully they sit and they should hold that sit until you release them with a release word like free release I don't know what other people use come on Ben come on Ben oh, good boy we'll do two laps around here and then we'll head to the station because my friend is coming to visit today and I thought I might as well take Ben to the station and let him have some exposure exposure to the people and the trains Good boy. For dogs that are a bit more reactive, if you can see another dog is coming and you know that your dog is likely to react, using that warning tone can just help them know that whatever's going to happen, you're in control of the situation and you're gonna make sure that they're safe so they don't feel the need to freak out. I know uh, I'm a bit hesitant to probably like give training tips per se because not only am I not a certified dog trainer in any way I only just go based off of what I've learnt I know there's a whole divide in the dog training community on what's right and what's wrong as far as how to train your dog there are people who good boy Ben good boy good boy there are people who insist on using positive reinforcement and people who will use what's considered negative reinforcement which just basically means that you're using a bit more like physical pressure um, maybe using the tone of your voice if you're displeased about something I think the well for me personally like having a border collie she's quite sensitive 
So I have found that if I use anything too harsh, it'll set it back. So that's that sort of training doesn't work the best. He likes balls. <laughs> Come on, come on boy. Oh good boy. Come on. Come on. Ben, Ben, come on. <laughs> come on. Woo! Woo! Oh good boy! Good boy, yes! Wow! Would you look at that? Good job, boy. Good job, boy. Come on. Come on. Oh, no, he's back off again. He's like, that bowl looks really, really interesting, really tasty. Come on. I'm gonna take my jacket off. It is very warm. So yeah, it just depends on what type of dog you have and how they respond. Um, because sensitive dogs, if you use too much negative reinforcement, like if you're too harsh with your actions or your words to them, they can shut down. And obviously that's not what you want. Good boy. Good boy, Ben. Good boy. Whereas other dogs need a bit of a kick in the ass. There are a lot of dogs out there that are really tough. And if you don't match their level of intensity, sometimes they won't respond if you're, t if you're speaking too softly to them. If you're not being physical enough with them but it all needs a very delicate balance you obviously don't want to just because you've got a big dog like i've got ben here who will be two two this year and he's a huge dog he's got a lot of power behind him but i mean even when i was walking here before you could see that i didn't need a lot of force to walk him Maybe when he gets, if he gets a little bit reactive, um, I need to make sure that, you know, I'm sort of anchored down just a little bit, just to be safe for both him and me. But otherwise, um, you know, you don't need that much power for the big breed dogs. But in saying that, some of them, you do need a bit of power just in the beginning when training them, just so they understand what you want from them. But that's why big dogs, like people who own big dogs will often train them a lot better or a lot more thoroughly purely because of their size. And the unfortunate thing, well, it's not unfortunate that those people train their dogs. It's a really good thing. It's more the little dog owners. They don't put much care or thought into the training for their little dog. And like you saw before, I mean, we were on the other side of the fence and that little dog, he, he or she came running up and was carrying on like a little pork chop. And that dude ended up leaving. So, I don't know, it sort of shows me that maybe he, he wouldn't be too comfortable with me letting Ben off the lead with his little dog. Whether or not the little dog will start something, I don't know. But something i see in america or i've seen from some like american dog blogging youtubers is that they seem to have parks there that separate small dogs from big dogs we don't actually have parks like that here in australia or well i don't know about australia because i mean i've not really seen many dog parks outside of victoria and i personally don't go to dog parks because uh ishka's had her own set of uncomfortable situations with dogs before. I just know that going to a dog park isn't going to be healthy for 
my dog and I don't know what other dogs are like so that's just a choice that I make but yeah we don't really have or well, at least I've not seen dog parks with that separate by signs see if he walks on the left oh shit he went on the right <laughs> I was hoping he'd walk along the concrete there and I could grab him by the collar So this is why if you're in a safe space, fenced in area, it's probably better if you have a long line just so you have that extra control but it's good when you're on walks with your dog to just teach them their name and practice them coming back to you. Oh good boy. So then it's a lot easier when you need them to come back. The bloody hell does this thing work? One hour later. What the hell? This thing is the weirdest fucking thing ever. Alright, here you go. Oh boy. So that's over his head. And then we're gonna grab this part. Oh boy. There we go. It's over his nose. And then this bit, I'm gonna tighten up. Yes, you're a good boy. Tighten that a bit. And then you can grab the lead and tighten it. Put it there. Oh, come on. And there we go. We've got it back on. How easy was that? Now we just got to find a gate, get out of here, and go to the station. And it probably will take me about 10 or so minutes to walk there. Putting the phone away. Come on, this way. Cool. Looks like someone burnt a bike there. Awesome. Good boy. Alright, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna message my friend. Tell her I'm on my way. We are on the way so at the moment look at this one hand how nice is that come on ben we got somewhere to be we got somewhere to be boy oh it's a warm day today it is a warm day today or maybe i'm just warm because i'm walking so much it's almost like a wobble tree is it a wattle tree? Oh my god, I think it is. How amazing. Something I've noticed with Ben is he just likes checking people out. Which is, there's nothing wrong with looking at people. And he's certainly allowed to look at people. But I'm sure from other people's perspectives, if a massive German Shepherd just stops and stares at you with its ears up, I'm sure you're going to be unsure of what it wants. Come on, this way. Good boy. Alright, here we are. Here's the station. We will go up and meet her up there. Let's see how well he does. Come on, come on, good boy. Good boy. Four minutes. I'm gonna go over here because there's a bit of shade. And we'll just hang out here for a bit. Come on. Oh, good boy, Ben. Oh, you're a good boy. Hey, hey, hey. None of that. Oh, you're a good boy. Not so much hair. Oh my gosh.
Oh, good boy. You're a good boy. Grandparents reckon he could get bigger because he is a male, but um, my dad reckons that he's probably stopped most of his growing now. Mm -hmm. 